Felix Kwachi Ofosu was the man we spoke to. He was deputy minister in the Mahama government and speaks for the former president. He's joining us on the line now. Uh, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. I'm sure you expected a response from the government, but not necessarily from the president himself. Now he responds and says that your boss, uh, having been accused by the first special prosecutor, should be the last person to be making comments of this nature, considering that he is what he calls allegedly a responsible person. He shouldn't be making these comments. And I believe he's re echoing what many critics said to you in the past week or so, isn't it? First of all, nobody is surprised that the legal wing of the MPP, also known as the Ghana Bar Association, has given this platform to President Akufuado and the Attorney General to throw tantrums and attack the person of the former president. It vindicates the position we raised that Ghana's entire judicial and legal architecture is an MPP appendix. Number two, the president has said some awful things since he took power. This has to count as the most irresponsible and reckless statement any president can make. He seeks to question how responsible President Mahama is and says that because President Mahama has criticized the judiciary, he should not be voted for. Well, even President Akufuado, who formed terrorist groups, calling them Delta forces, invisible forces, and brought in mercenaries to train these terrorist groups to challenge the authority of the state, was elected by the people of Ghana. So I can assure President Akufuado that given that President Mahama is a far sober and more reflective person than he is, if he has become president, President Mahama will be elected. The people of Ghana will have no difficulty electing President Mahama. But it is just as well that the president could not give any tangible defense to the legitimate concerns that President Mahama raised. And for the fact that he, President Akufu, has pumped the judiciary with MPP partisans, it is beyond doubt. And again, as I do always, I will give you specific instances that the president cannot deny. The last time I told you about Solomon Tumesi, who is a former chairman of the LPP wing in the Doma East constituency of the Bruno Afro region. He is also a known LPP communicator in Kumasi. There is video evidence of him doing this work for the MPP. President Kufadu appointed him a high court judge sometime last year. And Ms. Ansar Ankuma is a known MPP activist who has posted publicly on social media defending the MPP. In fact, he used to work with the former Deputy General Secretary of the MPP. Cannot be one in his law chambers. He has been appointed a high court judge. Justice Yalgo, who is now sits on the Supreme Court, publicly admitted to his MPP membership before Parliament's account, uh, sorry, appointments committee. There is evidence of his contestation on a parliamentary ticket of the MPP. He did not deny it. His posters are actually public knowledge. Everybody knows this. He was appointed as a Supreme Court judge by President Akufad. Justice Nabila Sahiba is the wife of President Akufad's trade minister. She is a high court judge appointed by President Akufad. Dr. Ernest Ogusu Dapana was a member of President Akufad's legal team in the 2020 case that we took to court. Justice Clemens Honyanuga publicly endorsed President Akufad for re election in 2020. At the time he did that endorsement, he was an appeal court judge. President Kufado promptly promoted him to the Supreme Court. And you know the role he played in the opportunities. And I could go on and on and on and I list for you a tall list of people like that. In addition to this, Umaru, is the fact that because of this packing of our courts, there are several bizarre, unfair, unbalanced judgments and treatments that have been meted out to the NDC that we can record. The most bizarre among them is this birth certificate ruling. In a case that both the NDC and the NDC had interest, we were told that a birth certificate, which is a document on which your parents' content is stated, does not show where one comes from because the NDC had an interest in it. We also have the date of opening. You know, after Clemens on the Luga justice reached the age of 70, which required him to retire. They gave him a six month extension to sit on the case with a view to conclude it. He could not conclude it. They appointed another judge to 
oversee the case. They said the rule that in order for him to have a fair idea of the whole case, it was important for him to start the trial afresh. Umaru, after this judgment, within weeks, this judge was transferred from a class so that he could no longer handle the case. And I could go on and on. Look at how they have treated the NDC in the matter of the passage of the U levy. You recall that when the NDC minority prevailed over the MPP and rejected the 2021 budget because of the introduction of the U levy, Justice Abdullah went to court. But the court, the MPP had interest in that matter. Within days, the case was listed and heard and ruled in favor of the MPP. Meanwhile, the minority also, on the back of the purported approval of the budget by the minority, went to court. Umaru, that case has been in that Supreme Court for three years. So why is it that when it comes to the MPP, there is such expeditious, uh, what do you call it, hearing of their cases? And yet when it comes to the NDC, there is so much delay. Look, only today, President Obama has had to complain once again about how political parties that have filed an injunction against the EC's conduct of registration exercise starting tomorrow have been treated. They filed this case on Thursday, last Thursday, with a view to ensuring that the injunction case is set in early enough for the parties to know exactly what they should do because the answer is starting tomorrow. We were told by the registrar of the courts that because the chief justice has traveled, no date can be given for the hearing of this case. The chief justice came back to town, went to Cape Coast for this bar conference. And yet, as, as of, of this afternoon, the case has still not been listed. Until President Mahama posted on this on Facebook, only for us to receive a message from the court registrar that suddenly the case has been saved for 17. At a time when the exercise that we seek to induct has already been uh, 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 has already started. So when you treat political parties and other interest par interested parties this way, and you treat their people differently, what do you expect us to see? Tell the point. By, by the stroke of a pen, he wrote to the chief justice that he did not want a judge who had cited him for contempt to sit on his case. Because he wrote to the chief justice, his request was granted. The judge was removed from the case. Meanwhile, as for the one case today, first, they said things that were being disparaging of judges. The same judges who they allegedly disparaged were part of the panel who sat on the case. Umaru, there is a judge who has held a journalist who is critical of the Akufado government in contempt. In the judge's rights against the journalist, he described him as a scoundrel. Yet, this judge was sent on this case. So why is there so much selectivity and unfairness and imbalance? And yet, we are told that when that selectivity and unfairness and imbalance occurs, we should also talk about it. But I can assure President Akufado that it does not matter how many times you throw presidential tantrums. We will never stop complaining about the unfairness and injustice in our judicial system. For as long as that injustice prevails, we will permanently complain. And nobody will set us up in this country, certainly not the former president. Are you not worried, though? The president is concerned. He says the, the commentary and the public discourse is extremely dangerous, to quote him, and represents a brazen attack on the independence of the judiciary. Do you not worry that the judiciary, which is supposed to be an independent institution, which should have nothing to do with what politicians do, is now being dragged by both leaders? That, that is problematic. It is possible that the persons who are appointed may have political leanings, but who really isn't political at the bench? But, Omar, how do you expect a guy with the whole MPP person to be independent on the bench? Well, we have a situation where ordinary citizens of this country, at least through the work of Anas, Anas have been shown to have used paltry amounts of money and young and goods to get judges to do their bidding. Yet we are being told that guys in the whole MPP activists and propagandists and party chairmen who are appointed judges are suddenly insulated from overbearing, overreaching partisan extremists like for example, for that you won't control them. And then what we see obvious signs of manipulation, we should keep quiet. So merely complaining about mistreatment is not dangerous. What is dangerous is the deliberate manipulation and politicization of the judiciary and state institutions. We are talking about a president who did not have any problem 
removing an electoral commissioner that he came to meet and replacing him uh, with the MPP students. We have seen him appoint an MPP chap called Apia Hene, who is known to be a guide in the whole MPP person to the electoral commission. Woman, the electoral commission is supposed to conduct elections as a referee between interested parties. So the MPP and MPP are contesting elections. And one of the persons who is organizing the election is an MPP person. How does anybody expect fairness? And how can the president be so duplicitous and hypocritical as to pretend that this is not an issue? And that the one who is complaining about the issue is the one endangering the judiciary. You see, he is behaving like a typical bully who punches him in the groin. And when you are written in pain and you cry out, he asks you not to cry because crying will disturb his peace. But I'm making the point again that for us, wrong. And this bias, this duplicity, this unfairness and imbalance persist. We in the NDC will continue complaining that no ethnic force, no ethnic force will compel us to shut up in the face of injustice. If the judiciary is independent, it must reflect in the way that it is populated. We cannot accept a situation where MP people are appointed to the judiciary. We see that they work in ways that undermines finance and balance, and then we shut up. That will never happen in this country. Very well. Thank you so much. Felix Kwachio Fosu was deputy minister in the Mahama government. He's uh, an aide to the former president, just um, uh, giving us his take on the president's comments uh, on uh, the state of the judiciary and the allegations by former president Mahama that he was packing the bench. Now, 